Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kif hakum. Yes, how are you? Uh, how is everyone today? So today we are going to be explaining about uh, the, the, the last parts that we have uh, in our lectures. So just to recall, uh, we have taken the how does resistance change with the temperature. So when temperature changes, resistance changes. And we also said that when temperature increases, the resistance also increases. And, uh, and the reason is that temperature just makes the electrons become more active and, and somehow uh, they're coming out of their shell, which causes uh, the resistance to be higher in the movement of electrons. And, and, and so we now we know that there's a, there's a relationship which is um, uh, proportional. Uh, I use the word proportional, not inversely. So the word proportional means that when the temperature increases, the resistance increases. And this is why we have here a positive slope. It goes up. And then the, the other way around is that is, this is the positive part. The negative part, for example, will be like that. But in this case, what do we have? We have something which looks like that. Now, in this case, if you can see that, well, this doesn't look like it is linear. It is non-linear. Uh, but somehow in some region it looks like it is linear which means that يعني, we can we can fit a linear model however this will not be accurate or we can fit a quadratic model which will be more accurate uh, so we are going to have now two equations and one for the linear and one for the quadratic. It depends on what is my need, what I'm going to achieve, what do I want to achieve. So talking about the linear approximation, so this is the equation that I'm going to use, which is R is equal to R T naught into one plus alpha naught into delta T. Now, uh, the, the R and T, so we have T, temperature changes, and based on the temperature change, we're going to have a resistance. So we're going to have data here t1 t2 t3 and so on and r1 r2 r3 and so on so this is the data that i have and based on that data and uh, that i have which which gave me this figure in this case i have a figure which looks like this so that figure represents what it represents the data and now i want to fit a model the model that I selected is a straight line equation which is y is equal to ax plus b and that straight line equation is the one that I just represented which is this equation here and and if you can see from that equation if you can recall the equation for a straight line the equation for a straight line which is y is equal to uh, sorry for that uh, so uh, the equation of the straight line we have y uh, again I'll just go back here so we have y is equal to ax plus b and you can if you can recall this is like y minus y1 is equal to now the slope which is uh, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 into x minus x1 so that is the same equation but we, we are, uh, we are uh, developing that equation based on that we have the information of x1 and y1 and we have the equation, uh, so we have the data of x2 and y2. And what do we mean by x1, y1, x2 and y2? This, this is what we mean. We, we have t1 and r1 and we have t2 and r2. So this is the equation that we have. Uh, so, 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 so that equation just tells us that if we have the data of R1, T1, and R2, T2, we can what? We can build our straight line equation. As simple as that. Okay. Now, the, the question comes is that, okay, um, what will be alpha naught? I mean, uh, just to fit the equation that we have, what will be alpha naught in this case? Okay, now we can rearrange the equation that we have here so that equation here we'll just rearrange it and rearranging is means that we will going to keep alpha naught on the left hand side by itself so in this case r minus r naught which is r at t naught 
let me write it again sorry r is equal to this is r naught into 1 plus alpha naught into delta t in this case i want alpha naught so alpha naught is going to be r uh, if we multiply r naught here that will be easier in this case we are going to have what we are going to have r minus r naught divided by delta t 1 over r naught you can do your math if, if that if i skipped and made it very quick well, but this is what you're going to have as alpha naught so you, you're just rearranging rearranging the e equations is to find uh, alpha naught uh, now uh, if you look at this equation here and and think about it says that okay why this doesn't doesn't look like this here which is the slope actually they look the same you can see that r minus r naught which is delta r over delta t and this is delta r over delta t which is delta y over delta x then why do we have one over r naught the reason that we have one over r naught because we already have taken a common factor of r naught that's the whole story because our original slope our original slope is what is r naught into alpha naught so that is my slope that is my original slope uh, 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 so uh, and that's why we have a different equation which looks like one over r naught now based on that i'm just trying to prove to you that this is the equation that you're going to use and it says a first uh, it's a straight line equation now if you don't want to use a straight line equation you want to use a quadratic one that is the equation that you can use for a quadratic one which is r is equal to r at t naught uh, this is at t naught which means it is only r naught okay it's not multiplied by t naught so it's r naught into 1 plus alpha 1 into delta t plus alpha 2 into delta t square now this alpha 1 will be the same the alpha that we just we have an equation for okay so and that alpha 2 you can find it um, in this case uh, which will con which will complete my equation now what is delta t delta t is delta t is t minus t naught and uh, so that's the equation that we have so let's see a problem and if you have a problem then it becomes easier if we try to solve now this is the x-axis and this is the y so we have x okay so we have x and we have y so x and y now i know that we can use the equation the normal equation if you, if you can recall y minus y1 is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 into x minus x1 and in this case y minus y1 we'll just select any values and in this case i'm going to select the value which is in the middle the median because uh, i'm just guessing that if i have uh, uh, um, if this is a, like a straight line equation if this is a straight line equation and I have a scattered data, the best fit of this data will somehow pass through the middle point. It will be in the middle uh, between all of them. So just assuming that I'm taking the midpoint or here the median, uh, it will be a good approximation. So I'll say that to now y minus y1, which is 110.2, is equal to y2 minus y1. Okay, now I need to select another y2, right? Uh, so let me see, I'm selecting this. Okay, so that will be y2 minus y1, which is 112.2 minus another y1. Now, in this case, if you can see that, what did they do here? They selected another two points other than the medium point. I'm not going to do this, okay? I'm not going to do this, but if you want to do it, you can do it if, 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 you, like, if you like to do so. Uh, because you need to select only one x1. So this is x1. And this is uh, y1 and this is x2 and this is y2 and uh, and i i know that this is like another different method that he's based uh, that he's basing his his calculation on um, uh, uh, so what did he do is that he has taken that as well he has taken that as well and considered that now this is x naught this is y naught 
and this is x1 and this is y1 so in this case when he says y2 minus y1 that will be y2 minus y1 which is 112.2 minus 106 and that is now exactly like this equation here over x2 minus x1 which is 90 minus 60 into x minus x1 and in this case x minus my x1 here he's considered them as not so he's taking the mid values here and that's why he said x minus uh, x minus 70 uh, x naught is 75 now if you just compare this is exactly like the equation that you you are going to obtain now this is the slope it's not exactly the slope we said that alpha naught into r naught is a slope but this looks like the slope that we are going to have here now if you solve this e problem here you will have exactly that equation the generic equation that you have here um, so uh, you can see how is the beauty of this uh, we can get the straight line equation using the standard formula of the straight line equation or you can use uh, using the the equation that is already provided to us uh, from from this problem here so what did we do and now this is how I solved this using the first line equation uh, looking at how did he solve it so he solved it saying that well I'm going to calculate alpha naught alpha naught is 1 over r naught into delta r over delta t in this case delta r at delta t he select two points which was 60 as we recall I'm just going to change the color to look at it so he, he selected that and that and based on that he he substituted 90 minus 60 and 112.2 minus 106 so he got the alpha naught and then he substituted and he obtained this equation will be exactly like the equation at the top here uh, so that was the first how to get the first line uh, sorry the, the 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 straight line equation now getting the straight line equation was was using the the, the the standard form of a straight line equation and if you want to go to the quadratic formula so that is the quadratic formula and in this case if you can see the quadratic formula it just uses the, the equation that we have here so this is the equation that I have here so what does this equation say that now I have I, I have two alphas I have alpha 1 and I have alpha 2 which means I may need to have two equations with two unknowns and in this case then I can solve these two equations with the two unknowns so looking at it this is what I'm going to have here I'm going to have r1 is equal to r0 into 1 plus alpha 1 into t1 minus t0 this is t minus t0 but because we said r1 it becomes t1 minus t0 plus alpha 2 into t1 minus t0 square and now we're going to take another point of r2 and t2 and in this case we are going to have 1 plus alpha 2 into t2 minus t0 plus alpha 2 into t2 minus t0 square and that is the second equation now we have two equations and two unknowns and this is what exactly we have here we have two equations and two unknowns and when he solved it he obtained alpha 2 and alpha 1 and then he found out that alpha 1 is exactly was, was the one for the straight line equation and this is what we have now this is the way we have to calculate the, 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 the equation of the straight line and for the quadratic line uh, it's not a line for the quadratic fit and 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 looking at which one is more accurate okay so which is more accurate is it the linear or the quadratic we already know that the relationship between the resistance and temperature is already non-linear so if it's non-linear quadratic would be the best fit and linear uh, both of them are approximation but the approximation of linear will have more error than the approximation of the quadratic 
uh, formula. And in this case, we are going to say that, well, let's see at 60 degrees. If you go back at 60 degrees, at 60 degrees, at 60 degrees, what do we have? If you can see here, at 60 degrees, the resistance is 106. So I know that the answer at 60 degrees, temperature is equal to 60 degrees centigrade, it will give me R is equal to 106. So when we substitute to find out what will be the resistance using the straight line equation, we find it was 107.1. And when I substituted the quadratic formula, we found out that the answer would be 106. Now, if you compare this, of course, the quadratic equation is the one which is more accurate. So that just proves that quadratic equation is better than the linear line equation. So this is the part that we have covered now for what? For uh, for uh, how the resistance changes with time and uh, sorry with temperature and 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 the, and the best fit that we can obtain uh, so that is the first part to do with the resistance uh, and how does it change with temperature now how to use that uh, in the RTD that equation we are going to look in a moment how, how to use it in the RTD now if you can recall that we already have taken RTDs before. Uh, we didn't take RTD as such, but we, we, we already discussed the Wheatstone Bridge, right? And Wheatstone Bridge, we said that, well, the idea is that if you take delta V here, it will be zero. Based on what? Based on the resistance, uh, so the, the null voltage is equal to zero, based on the resistance that R1 times R of the RTD, is equal to R2 times R3. So that is the equation that we or we, that we have. And how to calculate delta V? Well, you can calculate the delta V if you want using the equation, if you can recall the equation. And in this case, I'm going to just go back to the, um, to the chapter we have taken before. And in the previous chapter, we already have seen in the previous chapter that uh, delta V is equal to V into R3 into R2 minus 1 R, R1 into R4 and so on. You're going to substitute that to calculate that delta V. And RV, uh, sorry, V is the supply voltage and these are the four resistors that we have. In this case, RRTD here is the R4. Okay, RRTD here is the R4. Okay, so that is what, what, what you have as an equation. And, and we have taken that before. And this is very similar at balance V naught is equal to zero, uh, which I mean delta V here, the delta V is equal to zero. And we get the equation which is R1 divided by R4 is equal to R2 divided by RT. It's the same equation that we I just had just showed. Now based on that, let's go back and see the problem that we have here. Uh, and this problem, you can see that the RTD has alpha naught is equal to 0 0.005, R is equal to 500 ohms, dissipation constant uh, of 30 milliwatts per degree centigrade at 20 degrees. The RTD is used in a bridge circuit such as that in figure four, that is the Wheaton bridge, with R1 and R2 500 ohms, R3 is a variable resistors, resistor to, to null the bridge, okay? Uh, the, the supply is 10 volts, RTD is placed in the bath. Now, so no, so what happened here? We have a 20 degrees. Uh, let me say that this RTD that we have here, it was at room temperatures, it was temp 10, 20 degrees. And then you put it inside here to measure at zero degrees centigrade. Now, when you put it here, uh, uh, what happens here is the, the question said that there's a dissipation constant. Now, let's forget about the dissipation constant for a moment and just let's calculate that if we take this RTD and we take it from 20 degrees till 0 degrees, what will be the resistors? Now, the resistance is R is equal to, okay, alpha naught, uh, sorry, is equal to R naught into 1 plus alpha naught into T minus T naught. 
of course, here we don't have an average or a median value. We just have two values. What are the two values? We have uh, we have the temperature was at 20 degrees and when it was at 20 degrees, here's the 20 degrees, what was the, uh, the res resistance? The resistance was 500. And uh, you can't see here, it's 500. And when it went to zero degrees, now my question is that, what will be that resistor? Uh, resistance, so what will be that resistance? Now this resistance that we have, we want to find which will be eventually the, the resist the, the 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 R3 that we want to null the bridge. What do I mean? So here we have our Western bridge. Okay. So we here here we have our Western bridge. And in this case, this is the RRTD. Okay. And he, he told us that R1 and R2 are 500 ohms. Let's look at so this is R1 and R2 are 500 ohms. So here we have 500 ohms. Here we have 500 ohms. Here we have the RRTD. And he's asking us what will be R3. Now based on that, what is the equation? Uh, the equation says that R1 times RTD is equal to R2 to R3. Now I already know that R1 is equal to R2, right? So this cancels with this. So what do we have? We have that if we find what will be the resistance of RTD, that will be equal to R3. So we can find R3 just by finding the resistance of the RTD. And this is what you're trying to do here. So here in this equation, we are trying to find the resistance of the RTD when it changed from 20 degrees till zero degree. So we are going to substitute R naught, it was 500 into one plus alpha naught given to me 0 0.05 into T minus T naught, it, 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 it was 20 and it became zero, the final value. And in this case, it was 550 ohms, which means the answer of R3 is 550 ohms. So that is uh, the equation that I have. But wait for a second is that we have now, uh, we have a problem is that, uh, and that problem is that we have a power, sorry for that, uh, is going out of the range that, that I, and that I'm allowed to. Okay, so, and I can take that rub off because it may confuse you. And, and, and going back here, <clears throat> so what do I have here? I have the power is 30. So we already know that power is equal to I squared to R. So there's a power dissemination. The, you always can relate that the, the, the power takes part. Yani you can see that the resistance here, I have a resistance, which is P over I squared, which means that if there's a power disseminate, dissipation, that means we are losing power. That means we are losing resistance. Okay, you, you can see how, what I'm trying to say here. So if I'm losing power, I'm losing resistance. That means uh, 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 that means what I'm trying to measure of what I'm trying to measure here, 450 ohms is not exactly 450 ohms. Uh, it's not exactly that. And actually, we are having little more, yani, because of that power that I have here. So here we have. 30 uh, milliwatts per degree centigrade. But wait for a second, that is per degree centigrade. So it's not our power. I have 30 milliwatts, which is equal to 0 0.03 watts per degree centigrade. So it's not my power. My, my power is I squared into R. So in this case, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to calculate the power, which is I squared to R, and I is, is, is simply the, 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 the voltage divided by sum of the resistance. Now the sum of the resistance that we have here, so, so it goes like that, so, so this is the I, or it goes like that, or this is the I. And in both cases, I is equal to V over R. 
in which we have the sum of the resistance. Sorry, here in this case, it would be like R1 plus R3. So we have 10 divided by 500, 500 plus 450, we're going to have 0 0.001 amperes. And if you substitute the amperes here, and you are having 450 ohms, the power will be equal to, the power will be equal to 0 0.054 watts. Now, 0 0.054 watts, if I, because I have a dissipation, dissipation that I'm, I'm slight, I'm, I'm, I'm having a difference in power uh, because it's, 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 it's contributing. Uh, 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 it, the power itself is, is, it is giving me, uh, there's little power which is lost. And because of this power lost, this is equal to 0 0.03 watt per every degree centigrade. And in this case, when I did this calculation, I found out that I have a 1.8 degree centigrade difference, which means it was not zero degrees. It was 1.8 degrees. And now because it's 1.8 degrees, I'm going to substitute this 1.8 degrees, and I will find out now the resistance is 454.5 instead of 450. Uh, so, what happens is that is that instead of going from 20 to 0 and I want to measure that at 0 degrees and I thought it was 0 degrees actually it was not it was at 1.8 degrees centigrade which means the resistor it went down from 500 ohms till 450 no it, we thought that is 450 but actually it is to 454.5 ohms Okay, a little higher because I have a little higher temperature of 1.8 degrees. So th that is that is how we can solve for, for the RTD. Now let's go for the next part which is related to the thermistors. Uh, so what I have here as a thermistor, I need to look at what is the equation of the thermistor. Okay, so, so here we have more details. Now, and, and we say, what is the equation of the thermistor? Now, why do we need to always search for equations? We already said that resistance changes with temperature. Okay, so we have here the resistance versus temperature. It's always the same story. Here we have resistance and temperature. It's always the same story. And we can find the best fit, whether the a linear form, which is not that accurate, and uh, or an um, and a quadratic form formula. In this case, we can see the characteristics of these devices are very different of those RTDs. Very different in, in what sense? Because the thermistors, instead of using uh, the, the, the idea of the conductance, we are using a semiconductor. And using a semiconductor, it, it just allows you that to, to measure a, a different range of temperatures, a different range of temperatures because of that. And you can see that if we plot R versus T, we have a very non-linear, which means you talking about linear approximation here is totally not accepted. So we need to use a non-linear form that would accept. And this non-linear form, it looks like it's an exponential term. So if you find out an exponential term that fits R with T, then you are going to have a much more accurate uh, uh, approximation for uh, for what we are having here as a relationship. Um, okay, so th this is what we're trying to say here. Again, the characteristics of these devices are very different from RTDs and depend on the behavior of semiconductor resistance versus temperature. Now, why it is very nonlinear? Because it is not a conductor, it's a semiconductor, okay? And so it's a semiconducts. And this is why we have a different um, characteristic and the, the good thing about it is going, we're going to have a different range, okay? And, and of course, that will be a different delta V. Now, if we just look at the thermistor before we think about solving problems, what about the sensitivity? I mean, is it more sensitive than RTD or not? The sensitivity of thermistor is a significant factor in their applications. And in this case, if you look at it, uh, 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 changes in resistance of 10% per degree are not uncommon. 
uh, which means that we're talking about uh, maybe if I can complete reading it will be clear a thermistor with a normal nominal resistance of 10 kilo ohms at some temperature may change by one kilo ohm for one degree centigrade okay so now it's, it's just putting it as a sensitivity remember sensitivity is change is change of output over change of input so that is a sensitivity in this case is change of the resistance over change of delta t and what it is saying it is saying that change of the resistance is 10 percent for every degree centigrade okay so now now you're getting the idea right the 10 percent of our so for every degree centigrade is going to change by 10 percent the resistance so that is what i have and this is why it said that here for every one kilo ohm it is going to change uh, sorry for 10 kilo ohm and if you take 10 percent of 10 kilo ohm that will be one so it will change one kilo ohm which is 10 percent of the 10 kilo ohm so it's one kilo ohm and for every one degree centigrade and that just serves this equation that we have here and uh, the construction of course the construction is that it's just a semiconductor fabricated in many different forms it includes disks, beads, rods, and many any size that you think flat size, uh, round size, <laughs> and uh, whatever size that you can think about. And if from one millimeter in diameter is as small as that, and it can be little, uh, little different than that as well. Uh, and uh, because uh, it could be even centimeters, depending on what you are talking about. Range. Okay, the temperature range of thermos depends on the material used to construct the sensor. Of course, it always depends on the material that we are using. There are three range limitation effects, melting or deterioration of the semiconductor. So the semiconductor is being used a lot. With time, it deteriorates. It becomes less effective. And or the material which, which protects the semiconductor, it is the one which is deteriorating. And, uh, and maybe that material is not sensitive enough for that range of temperature. So we need to be careful of that range of temperature. Now, what is that range of temperature? It is high temperature. With high temperature, thermistor will not be that good to be used because it is a semiconductor. Okay, and um, talking one about the response time, the response time of the, of the therm thermistor, again, principally depends on what? On the quantity of the material present in the environment. Thus, for the smallest bead thermistor in the oil bath, we have a good thermal contact and a response of half a second is typical. The same thermistor is still, uh, and still air will respond with a typical response time of 10 seconds. So talking about direct contact, it will take 0.5 seconds. Talking about measuring the temperature in the air, it will take about 10 seconds. Okay, and so on. You can read more information if you would like in that. Uh, now for signal conditioning, I need to condition whatever I have uh, as a voltage. So depending on the voltage that I have, I'm going to, to signal condition that, that, that information. I need to consider also the dissipation constant if we have any dissipation. In this case, let's look at this example. Uh, so in this example, okay, so I have a thermistor. Uh, I'm not sure if I can zoom in. Uh, let me see that. Okay, so let's zoom in so that we can uh, have a better look. Okay. Okay, so we have a thermistor as to monitor room temperature it has a resistance of 3.5 kilo ohms at 20 degrees so that is r1 t1 with a slope of minus 10 percent per degree centigrade so i have a slope the dissipation constant is 5 millivolts per degree centigrade it's proposed to the th use the thermistor and the divider of figure six uh, to provide a voltage of 5 volts at 220 degrees evaluate the effects of self-heating now the self-heating, as we said that we already had a self-heating from our previous example from 0 to 1.8 degrees. And that self-heating uh, is, is a problem. Now again, if I want to calculate the, the, uh, the, the, the thermistor, uh, the, the, sorry, the voltage, the voltage is uh, 3.5 over 3.5 over 3.5 and, uh, and, and to 10. Uh, and in this case, 
this is using the divider voltage why i why i'm using the divider again why i'm using the divider equation to calculate the voltage because it's written the problem it is proposed to use the thermistor and the divider of figure six so it, it is just the figure of of, uh, of the divider and in this case with the divider i have r1 over r1 plus r2 i'm just measuring the voltage on one of those um, resistors and i will get that will be five volts now based on this five volts I divided by the Thevenin resistance and I will get the power is 7.1. Now dividing 7.1 over the milliwatts per degree centigrade, the dissipation constant, what I'm going to have, I'm going to get the 1.42 degrees. Now this is the 1.42 degrees of the heating that I have. So again, let's look at it. So I have a 10 volt that co goes through these two temp uh, uh, resistors. I'm trying to measure the, the voltage here on R7, which is the resistor of the th thermistor. So this is the thermistor that I have. And based on the, the, the thermistor, what I'm going to calculate, what is the voltage on the thermistor? It is RTH for the thermistor divided by 3.5 kilo ohms plus R of the, uh, that, uh, of the thermistor. Now, what is my thermistor? I'm assuming this also 3.5 kilo ohms. And in this case, that if, if this 3.5 kilo ohms, I can calculate VD. And if I calculate VD, I can calculate the power. And after I calculate the power, I divide P over PD. I will get 1.42 degrees. Now, that is the self-heating that I have here, self-heating. And in this case now, uh, by this means, the thermistor resistance is really given by, now I'm going to calculate what would be the thermistor resistance it's really given by what it's given by 3.5 kilo ohms minus 1.42 and 2.1 over degree centigrade again what is 0.1 over degree centigrade do you remember the sensitivity part where we said that we have a 10 percent the 10 percent for every degree centigrade now what is that 10 percent it is 0.1 Okay, from where did we get that information? You can see it here again. Huh? It has a resistance of, this is the thermistor, it has a resistance of 3.5 kilo ohms at 20 degrees with a slope of minus 10 percentage over degree centigrade. Now, what, what is minus 10? It's minus 0.1. So we have minus 0.1, and this is why we have, have a minus here. So we have minus 0.1 over degree centigrade. Uh, for again let me see it with a slope of minus 10 percentage for every degree centigrade so I, I need to multiply this now so this this is what I have here uh, per degree centigrade if I multiply by the self-heating uh, the answer is what the answer is 0.1 of course I'm talking about uh, the 10 percent of the resistor so the change in the resistance the change in the resistance, which is 10% into the resistance, considering the self-heating, it will be now the answer will be 3 kilo ohms. So it's 3.5 minus 0.5 kilo ohms. Okay, so the self-heating caused a difference of 0.5 kilo ohms in this, in this case. Now, if you recalculate the VD, the VD now will not be uh, 5 volts. Our the, the voltage divider will be 4.6 volts and the actual temperature of the environment is 20 degrees but the temperature that this is not so so it's, it's like I'm trying uh, uh, the, the, the problem is that because of that self heating I'm getting a different temperature than the temperature that I'm expecting uh, it's all because of what it's all because of what we are having of the dissipation and this is what it says here this example shows the importance of including the dissipation effects in resistive uh, temperature death transducers the real answer to this problem involves a new design that reduces the thermistor current to a value giving perhaps 0.1 degrees of self-heating so we are trying to say that we need to have a, a, a redesign just to make sure that it measures the correct uh, the correct um, uh, temperature and in this case I, I, I 
if I can change this minus 10% for every degree centigrade, it be, if it becomes minus 1% uh, because we are changing the material, and if this becomes 0 0.01, and in this case, instead of being 0.5 ohms, it will be 0 0.05 kilo ohms instead of 0.5 kilo ohms. And if it becomes 0.05, uh, uh, very happily, this will be 3 minus uh, 0.05 instead of 0.5. Sorry, 3.5 minus, uh, so let me say it again. So it was, the answer here is 3.5 minus 0.5 is equal to 3 kilo ohms. So I'm going to have now 3.5 minus 0.05 Wow, so that is like 3.495, um, okay, and, uh, and, and, and in this case, you can see how accurate things will be if we just fix our uh, material, and that's part of the redesign thing that we can do here. Uh, last topic, which is a thermocouple. So thermocouple is another temperature sensor that we can use. And uh, in this case, um, um, the, th the thermocouple uh, is one of the uh, very popular um, um, uh, temperature sensors. And it uses two different uh, materials, as we can see here. I already explained before that, uh, if I can remember, I'm not sure. Let me see the two junction. Did I explain that or not? I thought that I explained it. I'm, I'm just trying to remember that. Uh, maybe I didn't solve any problem. So uh, let's go and, and, and go to the explanation of the basics. So what do I have here? Uh, we have two dissimilar materials, two different materials, okay? The two dissimilar materials are joined at two points. Okay, so we have two dissimilar materials are joined at two different points of unequal temperature. Uh, a small voltage will appear. So we have one point and another point, and you have these two dissimilar materials that you have. And because of that, you're going to have a di difference in temperature. Now, if you have a reference for one of them and any change in temperature, okay, um, and any change in temperature, talking about this point, and then here we are going to, me to measure the delta V. Now any change in temperature, any change in temperature, sorry for this, any change in delta T will cause a change, uh, any change in delta T will cause a change in delta V. And this is what we're going to have. So the simplest and most common device is a thermocouple. It makes use of the fact that we have two dissimilar metals, again, at two points of unequal temperature a small voltage difference will appear. So delta T will give me uh, delta V in this case. Uh, 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 I have a class, yes. Okay, so delta T will give me a change in delta V. One end is the point where the temperature is to be measured theoretically, uh, is to be measured. Theoretically, the other end should be kept at fixed temperature. So we are going to fix one point, which is the reference point. We are going to fix because we are going to measure the temperature difference on the other side. So it's like saying that, well, I have a bath. This, I'm going to put this thermocouple. So one end of the thermocouple is fixed temperature and the other end is changing. And based on this change in temperature, because the temperature here is changing 20, 21, 22 degrees centigrade. And based on the change in temperature here, I will have a change in the voltage. So this is what you're going to have. So one end in the point where the temperature is measured. Theoretically, the other end should be at fixed temperature. So this is what you're going to do. And in this case, we are going to measure what? The electromagnetic force, which is simply talking about the voltage in this case. Now, what are the advantages of the thermocouple? The advantages, they are low cost and they're simple. And they can measure up to 750, 1,250 degrees, so it can go to a very high temperature. But the disadvantages, especially that I cannot always fix the, 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 the reference, I have, <laughs> it could be plus minus 2 degrees in some cases, uh, in some bad cases. 
of course there are better ones but you can imagine that measuring plus minus two now this plus minus two if you go and talk about a high temperature like 1000 degrees and you say well it's not 1000 it's 998 degrees centigrade well it's okay okay so when when you go to high temperatures it becomes really okay now what is the equation that we can use in the thermocouple uh, the, using the solid state theory and it's called the seed back effect the information uh, situation may be an analyzed to show that the MEF can be given by integral of the temperature so we have E is equal to T to T1 so this is the equation that we have here T is equal to T1 to T2 the integration QA minus QB into DT now what is QA minus QB well it's simple we are just talking about two uh, different uh, thermal transport if you can remember q is equal to what is q is equal to mcp delta t so we are just measuring like two, q at two different places and now one is fixed and the other is changing so this is what we are trying to do here we are trying to get that equation so that the difference between qa minus qb will just give me the difference in the voltage the emf force now if you fix one of them and this is changing because of the change in temperature and uh, so which means the heat is changing so this is going to be related to the temperature of the system only because this is fixed uh, and this is where we are going to try to, to to use now looking at the q the q is equal to mcp delta t if we have the same mass which is this case yes same material same cp yes delta t is the only thing which is changing to change q so here we are saying that that that, that q only changes because of delta t mainly in this case because all others are kept as constant and in that case again we will say that the main two variables are the t1 and t2 so the, 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 the voltage, in this case, small e here, which is the EMF force, is a function of what? Is, the, is a function of the change of T2 and T1. Now, if T1 is fixed, so it's a function of T2. And alpha is just a reflection of what? Alpha is the constant of voltage per Kelvin, which means we are going to find a relationship. And that relationship says that, now, if I change t2 because t1 is fixed if i change t2 and i can make a plot of course of t2 minus t1 uh, with emf force i'm going to get a straight line and that slope will be the alpha and that alpha will tell me how much voltage if you look at the units of alpha alpha has the units of v over k okay so these are the units okay so talking about voltage over so this is voltage over Kelvin which is voltage over temperature so we're simply saying that if the temperature changes what will be the voltage and that is the equation that we have here we look at what will be the voltage if the temperature changes and uh, and, and this is just the explanation and, and, and to talk about now, and, um, and we are having two dissimilar materials, and, and we already said that there is a one which is reference, and there is one which is also going to be changing. But if you go to some industrial environments and you're going to use these wires, these wires may not be I mean, as effective as you would expect, I mean, and especially if you want to have longer wires. So you need to protect them. So we need to talk about protection here again. So you, you can see the importance of that, they, they, that they should be encapsulated in a protection layer. And um, um, something else I would say that there's something called two wire and a three wire. Okay, so this is where we have a three wire uh, thermocouple system. And three wire just becomes more accurate and the whole idea of the three wire is to have what is to have a reference temperature because okay, so this is the whole idea of having a reference temperature because one reference temperature may be not that accurate but having two reference temperature to cancel out the effect of that reference 
and and then we can have the TM which is the T measured value that you are trying to measure in this case now looking at uh, the thermal sensor you can we, we can see that we have many different types and those types means different materials okay and instead of saying the name of the material we just give the, give it a letter so the J type is uh, the, the J type in this case the J type is iron uh, the T type is copper and the K type is chromal and E and S and R type now the J types because we have different materials we're going to have a different range and you can see how big are the ranges that you can measure so we don't have a problem of plus two degrees if you have this big big ranges that we can measure so if you use the iron it goes to 760 but if you use the chromal alumal it goes to 1260 degrees so this is the power of that thermocouple when you see that big these big ranges that we have and you can see that the ranges are linear somehow in this case and as i said that they are linear because we are fixing one of those temperatures and we are having this just equation which says e is equal to alpha into t2 minus t1 and that is why we have that linear relationship now let's look at uh, the thermocouple uh, tables so at 210 degrees what was uh, okay, so here we have the temperature and here we have the millivolts. I forgot to say that uh, this shows the different types. What will be the, the voltage based on the temperature? So if you're talking about 210 degrees, 210 is somewhere here. If you go to the J type, it will be about 12 millivolts, something like that, you see? So if you get to talk about the J type at 210, we are having about something like 12 millivolts. Similarly, if you go to uh, the S type, what will be the S type? Uh, if we measure a voltage of 4.768 millivolts with an S type, okay, 4.768, 4.768, so this is four something somewhere here. And if you go to the S type, it, it becomes like oh my god it's, it's like just below 750 uh, oh it's 555 so I, it means that I'm not that accurate so if, if I just go here okay some somewhere here okay 500 and something so it's 555 and so on so th these are the way of how we can calculate okay this is the way of how we can calculate so this is this is the way how we calculate it. That's that's the only um, thing that we have to talk about. Uh, thermocouples is simple, and uh, it's just a substitution. And this is just talking about an interpolation. If you're having uh, something that falls into values, let me give an example of the interpolation. It's just interpolation, just as as as, as an uh, it is an application of a straight line equation. A voltage of 223.72 millivolts is measured with a type K thermocouple at zero degrees reference. Um, okay, so 223.72 with a reference. The reference is not the temperature, by the way. Huh? It, this is just the reference. We just need to know that there is a reference. Find the temperature of the measurement junction. Okay, great. 23.72. Let's go to 23.72. And 23.72 somewhere like here, for example. And if you go to the J, I, I, I'm not sure did they say J or not. That will be 450 degrees centigrade. Ah, oh, it's the K type. Oh my God. Okay, so let's go to, to the K type. So the K type, it will be about 600 degrees centigrade. Okay, so. Uh, so from the table, you find that VMs. 23.72 lies between 23.63, 23.84. Um, now uh, we need to see the, the the table. Okay, we don't have the table here. Whatever. Um, if you can see that, what was the temperature we obtained? It was about 600 degrees. That is based on what? Based uh, on the figure. So we can find out. Uh, that the temperature based on the figure which was 572 in this case 572 degrees now how did he obtain 
far in 72 degrees he he looked at the table now we need we need to look at the table to 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 get an idea of how he got that information now looking at i'm i'm just putting the part of the table that we need to use here and in this case what do we have we have uh, if we assume that this is the information that I have so I have the voltage is 23.63 at 570 degrees and I have 23.84 millivolts at 575 degrees now the question is asking me that without using the figure if I have this table what will be the voltage of 23.72 now 23.72 lies between these two points now, how to calculate what will be the temperature that lies between 570 and 575? We call this interpolation, okay? Interpolation simply says that, I'm using a straight line equation, that the slope here is equal to the slope uh, on the temperature side. And, and, and this interpolation, it is applied to any, any kind of data that has X and Y. In this case, we have voltage and temperature, but it can be applied to any any type of data that we have. So what is the equation that we have? Vm minus Vl, if, if you look at it like that, and it's like Vm, Vm minus Vl is equal to Vh minus V high minus low over high minus low into uh, Tm minus Tl, okay? You put it in another way as Y. So the Y that I'm trying to measure, okay, so I'm just putting it as Y. So the Y I'm trying to measure minus Y1 is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 into XM that is given to me, which is 23.72. Uh, or the other way around is as it could be that ym is given i'm finding xm minus x1 okay uh, so so this is like a generic interpolation so we what we are trying to do here we are trying to do some kind of an interpolation okay interpolation and and this is where here this is the equation of the interpolation that we are trying to use and here I'm trying to do some kind of interpolation. I'm substituting to find out that the temperature is 572 based on the tables. Now, these tables are exactly like this figure. But instead of having a figure, I may give you a table. Using the figure, it will be easy that I can get the value. As we already said that we can get, knowing what will be the millivolts, we can directly know what will be the temperature. Uh, which is 570 something but if i don't have this table uh, figure i may have a table which is representing this line in the figure okay which shows what is what is the temperature and what is the voltage okay so this is the interpolation part that we have and uh, and and this is how we solve it another interpolation part which also explains that we can use this interpolation for any type, for any part. In this case, find the voltage of J, type J, uh, and it has a temperature. Of, it wants me to find what is the voltage, what is Vm at Tm is equal to minus 172 degrees. So we are going to apply the, 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 the problem that we have. In this case, we are going to look at the table, which has V low and V high. And we have T low and T high. And, and what is V low and V high? It, it, is, it, is the, it is the measured voltage which sits between two different voltages. Okay, it, it is sitting between them. And that is the Vm, and this is the V low and V high, and this is the T low and T high. And we are trying to find out what will be now Tm. Uh, in this case, sorry, in this case, I'm having Tm which sits between this TL and T high, and I'm trying to find out what is Vm. So uh, simple, just an equation and substitute. So that's all for this chapter. All the best, and uh, 
see you in the next chapter inshallah ma'asama